Okay, right, you're okay. Okay. Do it again, he's... he's uh, here we go, then. Put it up and say what it is. Uh, two, one. Take, take three, Davis and Schofield. Okay, to get back to that football game, Albert uh, Webb was captain of the team I was playing in once. I was only 15, I suppose, Mr. Schofield. Yeah, I will remember it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Well, there's that rough mob at Kempton we played. They finally got outed for a long time, didn't they? They, they weren't yes. allowed to play. No, so that's right. So they, were they were so rough. But anyway, on this occasion, um, I'd been doing pretty well the first four or five minutes, got five or six kicks, and uh, but I couldn't do anything with it. I mean, I wasn't a very good kick in at the best of times. Albert wasn't too pleased with me. Finally, one of those rough Kempton fellows knocked me down, and I didn't get up that time. But I was, I was still conscious, spinning. My head was spinning around, and I, out of the mist, I heard somebody sing out, "See, Tiny, Tiny's hurt." That's, uh, that's my name, as you yes. remember. Yes. Tiny's hurt. But immediately, I heard Bert's raucous voice coming from right down the other end of the ground. As bugger him, leave him, let him be, so he might wake the bastard up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, they were pretty tough football. Oh, it was. It was, it was mighty tough. Because mm. Cyril were, they were a very good team around yeah. that, that era. So and the, even before that. So the Brown Trophy, was that? Oh, Brown it was Trophy the Brown Day Trophy Day. days. That was, they were the premier, right. uh, premier uh, countryside right. in the state. And... Uh, but they won it. Uh, they won it one time. They won it under questionable circumstances. Oh wasn't yes, it? well it was <laughs> fair. It was fair those oh, that's times. Right. <laughs> they uh, they went to Oatlands to rest it, try and rest it back, and uh, I think father drove them to Oatlands in a horse and coach. Yes, yes. I think that that is It'll the story. Right, yeah. And uh, Charlie Phillips was the boundary umpire, and it blew a gale. Mm. It's no no. Uh, Nothing uh, untoward to, yeah. to blow blow heavily in Oatlands because right. it's always blowing. Yeah. And uh, when they they got on the ground, the idea was that Phillips was to throw the as boundary umpire was to throw the ball in high when they're kicking with the wind, and Stud Pullen, the big six foot four Stud Pullen, yes. would rush it towards the goals. Right. When they were yeah. kicking against the wind, he would throw it in low, and Stud <laughs> would. Push it push out it of bounds. Push it over the bounds, <laughs> saving time. But yeah. we got Wasting her back. Time, in fact. We got her back. I, don't, I can't tell you the story uh, yeah. when, yeah. but it must have been before 1914, yeah. if they went in a coach. Yes, that's right. Because motor cars came in about about that time. Yeah. But she never went back. She right. stayed here. That's right. The, and the you brown can, trophy was still in the old. Uh, it's just still there now. Right. You can go down yeah. and see it yeah. if you don't believe me. Right. <laughs> Let's see the front of the board, you think? Okay. You can't see with your hand. Uh, no. Right, take three. Good. What was uh, Neil like as a, a football player? A bit of a ruffian? No, he, he was just an ordinary country kid that uh, brought up in the country, loved the country, and played country football. Uh -huh. Was he known as Neil? No, I best knew him. I think everyone knew him as Tiny. I don't know why they called him Tiny. I think he was, he was slight, more slightly built than his other brother, and that was the reason. And did uh, the fact that he was small stop him on the football field? No, he, he went... Uh, the ball was there to be got, and Tony was after it. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yes. And uh, what about fighting at all? Was, uh... No, we didn't have any fights. The, uh, we were all good cobbers, and after the football match, we'd all drink out of one another's bottle of ale. I, I don't think there's any, any. Uh, it wasn't carried off the ground. I don't think. Was uh, I suppose football was a bit of a unifying thing for people in town. Everyone followed the same football team, and the kids in the football town. Oh yes, yes. It was. Um, Sorrell was. Uh, over the years, Sorrell was a very good country football side. They are today, even in the amateurs. Okay, mate, cut. <laughs> Peter, you stop that again. Oh. Step back and then you tell us when to click it.
take four interview with Davis. <coughs> where did you grow? I don't know. Where else? Come down with your mic. Yeah. Where did Where did you grow up, Neil? Well, this is the old uh, family district here at Srell, but I was born in uh, in Nala. That's in Midlands, Tasmania, and that's that's not a town. That's a railway siding, just a a little shed. The train will stop if you wave a white wa uh, red flag, the same colour as my shirt. Um, but when I was about eight years old, my father moved back here to this uh, old family home, and oh, it was bloody... yeah. Just stop. Uh, okay. Just keep going. And okay. Start again. Yeah, let's go on to the bit about your grandfather, how he came out here. Um, do you want me to go back no, on that? No, no it's okay. We got that. Okay. Um, well, the, I, we, my father came back to the old traditional home here at Sorrell. It was almost like a metropolis, um, so close to the city. But my great-great-grandfather first settled here. He arrived in the 1820s with a sheepdog and a guinea. Uh, when he died, uh, 50 or 60 years later, he um, owned three farms, including this one, and had some property on the east coast of Tasmania. Uh, but some of that was granted by the queen at that time, you know. Did any of that pass down to you, the family fortune? Ah, well, when it, by the time it's all filtered down to me with lots of uh, uh, grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren, uh, there was nothing left. <laughs> so I'm not a farmer. Well, how did you travel in those days? Well, um, in the Midlands, we travelled everywhere by horseback. It was to school by horse. Later on, there was a school bus, but uh, initially by horse. And um, was there wasn't, far? well, it was about nine miles to the school, nine miles there, nine miles back. But uh, we enjoyed it. And uh, Come hell or high water, you'd go on Well, this? yes, I don't recall losing a day uh, through bad weather, and sometimes it was snowing, but uh, and often very cold mm. and raining. Uh, did you ever hunt as a kid? Yeah, we hunted rabbits. That was uh, half because we liked to do it. It was a lot of fun. It was one of our pastimes. We had dogs. But also, those were uh, uh, years towards the end of the Depression, and uh, it was an uh, important part of our diet. Even though we lived on a farm and had beef and uh, uh, mutton, we sold the sheep and cattle, and uh, quite a lot of the time ate rabbits. Of course, we did eat some of the mutton too. Had dairy and, food. And um, as for butter, we sold butter, but we didn't eat it very often. I don't recall eating butter uh, for the first few years of my life. We ate. Uh, Dripping, probably a lot better for us anyway. Mm. And living on the on the farm and growing up amongst country people, did that give you any affinity to peasants in Asia? Well, I think so because I've found it surprised me a little, but uh, I've found that country people everywhere face much the same problems, and therefore they develop very similar philosophies. It doesn't matter that in Australia they may live in much better houses and different climate they face the same problems in bringing up their children and they have to improvise, uh, they have to make their own decisions and they have a lot of time to themselves and with their families to think and uh, therefore a, a philosophy builds up which is very similar in most countries I think. What about life and death? Yes, well, um, you learn to accept those things very early in life. You see birth among all the farm animals, uh, maybe uh, some of your relatives are, are born in the in the house as well because they're uh, too late to go to a hospital to a doctor. Uh, similarly, some of your family members may die. My my own mother died at home suddenly of a heart attack, and uh, she the funeral went from my uh, farm home a few days later. You were only ten at the time. I was, was only only traumatic? ten. Traumatic. I don't think it was traumatic. Obvious sadness and the, the same. Um, uh, sadness and grief that, that anybody feels, but uh, I wasn't afraid, as some people may be, of death. Uh, and I don't think any country people really are. Similarly, my father died um, in the Great Bushfires here in 1967. Now that may be, a, uh, to most people, that s might seem a very unusual death. I don't say that it's normal among farm people, but it was accepted as being what sometimes happens in the countryside. Well, he was burning the house, was he? No, he was um, helping a German farmer friend of his defend uh, 
when I say defend, to try and save the farmhouse of another friend, a third friend. And they were both, um, they were both caught in the raging bushfire and killed. Mm. Um, but that's, uh, country people accept that, not only in this country, but in other countries that they accept death by drowning in floods and uh, exposure no. or accidents in the countryside, things like that. Good. Okay. Take five, interview Davis. Were there any members of your family that particularly influenced you growing up? No, not really. Uh, I suppose my father did to a certain extent, but it was really my environment, the, the environment which influenced me more. A uh, country kid has to improvise a lot. He's left alone a good deal. He has to make the most of what he has, and that's um, that was a great help to me in Asia, particularly with adapting to new foods and conditions. And um, country children grow up having to do a lot of things for themselves. Uh, nobody else can help them in, when they're right out in the bush and they have to make decisions, they have to make their own decisions. And this, is, this is obviously good when you're in Asia or as yes. a correspondent. Yes, it's obviously good for me um, throughout my life, but particularly when faced with difficult decisions, uh, alone or mm, not exactly alone, but when nobody else can uh, make that decision for me, for instance when I was in the field with Vietnamese troops or Cambodian soldiers, um, only I could make that decision but it really didn't come hard because I'd been doing that all my life. What about with sport? I mean yes, well of course. Uh, I played country sport as a very young man, as a schoolboy, and as a, still as a schoolboy, I was playing uh, country football, and uh, <laughs> that's a lot harder than when you play in the city, because uh, they're tough boys, tough men mm. playing football. A good endurance test. Yes, it's a good endurance test. Of course, I was running too. I ran professionally later, um, because professional running is quite big in Tasmania. Mm. Of, uh, of course, you no longer have the farm, do you? No, it's been sold out of the family. That's a bit sad. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, the good old days were the good old days in the countryside in Australia. I rather feel that. And it's sad in general. Um, I'm sad not to be able to come back to the old family home because, it, after all, it was nearly 150 years in our family. Uh, but that's life. <laughs> Every town has its characters. Can you remember any from... Oh, indeed. Um, in days gone by, of course, the country towns had a lot more characters. I suppose that was because they were much more isolated than they are now through lack of communication. But I remember, oh, several, half a dozen in this small town of Sorrell. One in particular, uh, I remember he'd never been to Hobart. It's only 20 miles away, the capital city. Uh, and it's across the river. On this side of the, on the Sorrell side of the river, was a, a small town named Bell Reeve, only uh, two or three times bigger than Sorrell. But finally, the old fellow decided to go. And away he went one Saturday morning, got on the bus. And in those days, you went to, the, to Bell Reeve and got on a ferry and went about a mile 